This might be one of my most requested videos, so I'm really excited to do a tutorial on flash guns for beginners. I'm going to split it up into two, so we're going to do on camera flash first and then off camera flash next time, because you kind of need to know what you're doing on camera before you make that step. Quick disclaimer. If you're looking for equations and, and really sort of abstract theories on inverse square law and all kinds of things, this is not the video for you. The purpose of this video is practical, easy to understand, so you can get some flash guns and start straight away. I can't be bothered with all of that theory. Right there, wrongly. So let's get into it. First of all, why do we need flash guns? Well, obviously we need something to light up a dark scene. But the more interesting aspect of flash photography, which is probably what you're more interested in too, is how to creatively control your exposure. What do I mean by that? It's probably better if I give you a demonstration. If I wanted to take a picture of Christopher without the flash and it would expose for him, the sky is completely blown out. If you go to manual settings, and expose for the sky, then Christopher is completely underexposed. So the way that we get around this is adding in light with a flash gun. So I'm at f8, 1 1 25th, and my flash gun is at a quarter power, ISO 200. And with any luck, we keep the highlights in the sky. If you've done any research on flash guns, you'll know that the prices vary wildly. And there are two camps, cheap flash guns, which tend to be compatible with pretty much every brand, and expensive flash guns, which are compatible with specific brands. So what are the differences? And why do I think you should save some money and buy some cheap stuff? The expensive flash guns are usually sort of 200 to 400 pounds more and the benefits of them are they communicate directly with the camera so they do more stuff for you they will do uh, what was like auto exposure mode ETTL evaluative through the lens I think it stands for feel free to correct me if I'm wrong and that means you can basically shoot in aperture mode or auto mode and the camera will have sort of a bit of communication with the flash gun and figure out what's going on and fill in the flash for you personally I don't want the camera or the flash gun to be in control of how the, the, the picture turns out. I want control over it. So this is why I prefer manual exposure and manual flash guns. More benefits. The biggest benefit I think is the speed sync. So the more expensive flash guns will give you higher shutter speeds. This is really, really handy if you're shooting, you know, like, um, like a droplet in water or something that happens in a split second and you need to burst loads and loads of photographs with the flash. The speed lights, the more expensive flash guns, will give you higher shutter speeds. However, for portraits, weddings, everything I've ever done, all of the examples in this video, I've just used at a sensible shutter speed of like 1 over 1 25th. So it's quite niche whether you need a faster flash gun or not. Another thing that the more expensive flash guns do over the cheaper ones is they tend to have a faster reload time. So you can burst, 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 burst before the flash gun needs to recharge. Again, for portraiture, weddings, etc., you don't necessarily need a hugely fast recharge time. And the cheap ones aren't slow. I'll do a demonstration for you here. So those are the pros and cons of the, the brand specific expensive ones versus the, the universal cheap ones. I am team cheap universal, not just because I'm a cheapskate. As I say, I want manual control. I want to be able to use these c creatively. And also, I'd rather save like 400 quid. So how do we expose the image how we want it? You've got two things in play here. You've got your camera and your flash gun. So I'm gonna start with the flash gun. The flash guns look really complicated with all different sort of modes and dials and fractions on them but there's only two things that you really need to concern yourself with with the flash gun. The first is the power and that is the fraction number so 1 over 1 is full power, 1 over 4 is quarter power etc. As a quick tip don't always shoot at full power by default because it knackers your recharge cycle time, it goes through your batteries like mad and it's often completely overkill for what you need. So we're gonna start like at quarter power and work from there. 
spoiler. The second thing that you need to know about your flash gun is your sort of focal point. Often on flash guns you'll see that you can change your sort of focal range maybe from sort of 20 millimeters to 50 millimeters, whatever. And it's a bit of a gimmick. Don't think you need to have that match what's going on in your camera. You don't have to match it to the lens. All that that's doing is inside the flash gun, it's making the light wider or narrower. So if you're shooting something that's further away, knock it up and make it narrower. And if you're shooting something that's closer, make it wider. But if you forget, it's not the end of the world. It's not something to concern yourself with too much. To calculate the correct exposure from this point, we have two options. First, we can look at the stupid equation. Each flash gun has its own sort of guide number and then you can divide that by your f-stop at ISO 100 and figure out how far away you need to be. But we're not going to bother with that because by the time you've done that you could have just figured it out with like three test shots. That's my method. So what I do in manual mode on my camera, I start with sort of middle of the road settings. 1 1 25th of a second, f8 and ISO 200 which is the base ISO of micro four thirds cameras. Then we will put the flash gun on quarter power unless the subject's miles away or you're competing with direct sunlight in which case go higher. Take a test shot, see where you're at and then from there you'll be able to see whether you need to make it brighter or darker. The one thing with the cheaper flash guns is the one thing that you can't really mess with too much is your shutter speed. Because if you go over, say, 250th of a second, you get this effect. This is the flash gun capturing as the shutter goes down, and that's just terrible. That's the benefit of getting a more expensive flash gun. So I don't personally keep my speed, my shutter speed, any higher than 1 1 25th. You can lower it a bit, as long as things don't get blurry, but don't make it higher. So then you ride your aperture and ISO and flash gun power to get the exposure that you want. And I promise you, within three test shots, you'll have exactly the right exposure. If it's too dark, open your aperture, up your ISO. If it's too bright, lower your ISO, lower your aperture and turn down your flash gun. You can do it in seconds and it's well quicker well quicker than doing the equation way. If you are doing this in a professional environment, which I do a lot, either you go out with your handy dandy assistant and do some test shots before you bring the clients over, or literally just say to them, I'm just testing the light. It takes no time at all and they expect you to mess with settings a little bit. So I don't think you're gonna look unprofessional if you do have to fire off a, two a few test shots. It's no problem. And the great thing about controlling the light in this manner is if you are indoors in a controlled environment, once you've set your settings once, you're done for the night. Don't think you have to do this over and over and over again. Like if you're in a, a room in a celebration after a wedding, the room ain't gonna change, the light ain't gonna change. Once you've got this right, you're sorted. If you're shooting outside, the sun may go down and you might have to brighten things up a bit, but we're already in the ballpark anyway at that point, so dead simple to look after and manage. Now let's talk about the angle of light. This is very important in all aspects of photography, whether you're using flash photography, sunlight, or constant studio lights. Most good flash guns, and make sure you do get one that does this, all the ones I recommend will, will turn and give you loads of freedom of movement. What you don't wanna do is dead on. That is just going to be like your on-camera inbuilt flash just on steroids and it's going to look crap. The shadows are going to look awful. So you have a few options. If you're indoors and the ceiling isn't too high, um, I would have it sort of up slightly or directly up. Then the flash will bounce off the ceiling. And believe me, it's powerful enough to do this. It will bounce off the ceiling and give a much more diffused light. If you want to take it a step further, and try and replicate this sort of 45 degree angle light that I have now, so I've got a light here and one behind me, sort of at 45 degrees, you can turn your flash gun on its side. That way, you will get a little bit of fall off on the opposite side, and it does look pretty cool. The other way to do it is over your shoulder, 
at a 45 degree angle. I know this sounds bonkers because you're literally pointing the flash in the wrong direction, but trust me, it's powerful enough to do it and the results are very diffused and very pleasing. Those last two only work if you're relatively close to the subject. If you're shooting something that's slightly further away, go for above or slightly bent. Never straight on. Never straight on. In addition to controlling the light with the angle, you can also add diffusion. The ones that I use have a little bit of diffusion, but to be honest, you can't really tell if it's on or off. And they have a catch light card. If you stick this up, what that does is it'll reflect in your subject's eye and give them a little bit of a spark in their eye. So it's quite nice to remember to put that up if your flash gun has it. You can also buy third party diffusion, like little soft boxes and stuff. Um, on camera flash, to be honest, I wouldn't bother, I would just angle it. Off camera flash, I would use diffusion, but we'll get into that in the next video. Here are some quick fire tips for your on camera flash. Number one, as I've said, don't point it straight ahead. It'll just look awful and it'll make you cry. Number two, always have tons, and I mean tons, I have like a box full of rechargeable batteries because even if the the flash gun itself hasn't run out, when the battery starts to get a little bit empty, the recharge time will get slower. And you don't want to be relying on sort of half dead batteries and the recharge time's too long and you miss something important. So always keep a lot of rechargeable batteries handy. It'll save your life. Another thing to bear in mind with flash guns is they are not infinite. The bulbs in them will eventually burn out. The, recha the recharge time will get lower and lower as the flash guns get older. So if you're wazzing it out at full power all the time, the lifespan of your flash gun will be severely shorter. And on that note, another tip, don't buy secondhand flash guns if you can help it if you want to get the most out of them because they could have been used twice, they could have been used 10,000 times and the bulb in them is already a bit naff. So they're cheap enough to buy new, I use them to death, you do get a lot of use out of them but don't buy them secondhand because you'll already be sort of starting and they're half dead. And I did mention it before but the most important tip which can cause many a heart attack if you're in a high pressure situation is don't let your shutter speed go too high you will ruin your shots and the flash gun can't keep up with it unless you buy a stupidly expensive one and it's it's kind of weird because when you're in natural light you do rely on your shutter speed a lot to change the exposure so in flash gun world just imagine that your shutter speed doesn't exist you stick it on that and leave it at that lower it if you need to but don't make it higher than around 120 1 125th possibly 180th. There will be a sync speed for every flash gun that you buy. My Young Nuos, which I highly, highly recommend, which you'll see more of what they can do in the next video, I stick it around 1 1 25th, just to be safe. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all about on-camera flash, you do let me know below, and I will be covering off-camera flash in the next video. So glad I finally got around to doing this tutorial, it's loads of fun.